Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, alleluia. Friends, welcome as we gather together to continue celebrating the presence of the risen Lord with us in the words that we say, in the bread that we break together, and in the gathering of Christ's modern day disciples. We continue the Easter proclamation of new life, of Jesus' presence in the world, of his presence among us and within us. And today in particular, we hold in our hearts and in our prayers those affected by the violence on our streets, those who lost their lives at Bondi Junction yesterday, those mourning the loss of loved ones, and those still keeping vigil by bedsides. Let us pray. Lord God of peace, bring your peace to our streets, to our world, to our lives. Remind all those who suffer the horrors of violence that your coming kingdom will be a place where violence and horror and pain shall be no more, and peace shall rule our lives and the life of the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been offered for us. Therefore, we come to celebrate the festival. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith with a sincere and a true heart. Merciful, Merciful God. God. Our Amen. Maker and our Judge, we have sinned against you in, in thought, thought, word, and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray. Lord of life, by submitting to death, you conquered the grave. By being lifted up upon the cross, you draw all peoples to yourself. By being raised from the dead, you restore humanity, all that was lost through sin. Be with us in your risen power, that in word and deed, we may proclaim the marvelous mystery of your death and resurrection. For all praise is yours, now and throughout eternity. Amen. Please be seated for our first reading. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Peter saw it, he addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us? As though by the, our own power or piety, we had made him walk. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send the Messiah appointed for you. That is, Jesus. Hear the word of the Lord.
second reading is taken from 1 John, chapter 2, 15 to 17. Do not love the world or the things in the world. The love of the Father is not in those who love the world. For all that is in the world, the, des the desire of the flesh, the desire of the eyes, the pride in riches, comes not from the Father, but from the world. And the world and its desire are passing away. But those who do the will of God live forever. Chapter 3. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purifies themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Hear the word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the first and the last, says the Lord, and the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus himself stood among his disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost 
does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. For the gospel of the Lord, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that I may speak in the name of the living God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. It's not enough this time of year that the tomb is discovered to be empty. It's not enough to proclaim as we do in our liturgy, Christ is risen. It's not enough even really to simply believe that the resurrection happened. At some point we have to move from the event of the resurrection to experiencing the resurrection, to living it out. And although this may seem like a difficult topic of conversation on a day where, as a society, we are still reeling from violence, it's a day where we are reminded that there is hope, that there is life. And experiencing resurrected life begins with recognizing the risen Christ among us, in our midst. That is the gift of Easter, but it's also the difficulty and the challenge as described in today's Gospel reading. So we continue on our journey post-Easter with these appearances of Jesus. He's joined Cleopas and his companion as they walked the road to Emmaus. He's made himself known to them as they broke bread together. And then he's vanished and they've made the journey back to Jerusalem to tell the good news to the other disciples. And suddenly, here they are when again Jesus shows up out of nowhere, interrupting their conversation. He's making a bit of a habit of turning up. Peace be with you, says Jesus. And they see him and they hear his voice, but they don't really recognize his presence. They, we are told, thought they were seeing a ghost. They know that Jesus was crucified and died and was buried. And their understanding of the world and how things work is that that's the end. There's a full stop after buried. They know that dead men don't come back to life and suddenly appear around the dinner table. This can only be in their experience, a ghost, a spirit 
without a body, some phantasm sent to torture them. The tomb is open, but their minds are closed. They are unable to recognize the holiness that stands among them. They are continuing to live and understand in their usual ways. They have separated spirit and matter, divinity and humanity, heaven and earth. Everything is in its own compartment and they are separate. Whenever we make that separation, we too close our minds. We too deny ourselves the resurrection life for which Christ died. And we lose our sense of and ability to recognize holiness in the world, in one another, and in ourselves. But with Jesus' resurrection, God shatters this separation, these human categories of who God is and how the world works. Resurrection life can never be comprehended or contained or controlled by our human thought or understanding. The resurrection of Jesus compels us to leave behind this compartmentalizing of divine and human, of flesh and spirit, to step outside these usual human understandings of reality and enter into something new. And that new reality begins with touching and seeing. It begins with flesh and bones and hands and feet and broiled fish. Jesus says to his disciples, look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. Then he showed them his hands and his feet and he ate a piece of broiled fish in their presence. Flesh and bones, hands and feet and broiled fish. These are the things of the world. These are substantial fleshy elements. The things of creation, the natural order. Mary, a woman created by God, gave Jesus his flesh and his bones and his hands and his feet. She also gave him the stomach that would eat the fish that God had made. The very same flesh and bones, the very same hands and feet appeared to Cleopas and his companion on the road to Emmaus and then vanished from their sight. And now they show up unannounced and unexpected in the midst of their conversation with the others. In last week's gospel, Jesus' hands and his feet, his flesh and his bones passed through walls and locked doors. The resurrected life of Christ, it seems, is revealed in and through the created order. Flesh and bones and hands and feet and broiled fish. But it's not bound by the rules that we live by. It's not bound by the rules of our creation as we perceive it. Rather, the resurrected body and life of Christ unite the visible with the invisible, matter and spirit, human with divine. Everything that we thought was separate is now together. Everything that we thought could never be united and were incompatible with one another have been brought together in the body of the risen Christ. On the one hand, Jesus has a real body, flesh and bones and hands and feet. 
but on the other hand, it's not subject to the natural laws of time and space. It's not one or the other, it's both. It's a new and a different reality. And the degree to which we have allowed ourselves to be bound by the created order is the degree to which we are unable to see resurrected life and holiness in this world, in our society, in ourselves. We bind ourselves through our fears, through our sorrows and losses, through our runaway thoughts and distractions, through our attachments or addictions to things and people and even beliefs. Sometimes it's our unwillingness to allow or trust God to grow and change us. In binding ourselves to the created order and the rules of nature, we lose recognition of and the ability to live in the sacred. And that's the very opposite of resurrected life. The resurrected life of Christ reveals that all creation and every one of us are filled with God, filled with holiness, filled with divinity. Nothing can bind or supersede the grace that is given us through the resurrection. Unconditional love, unconditional forgiveness, unconditional life, all the things that are really hard to get our minds around, hard for us to believe or see or live into, particularly when we look at the violence around the world. But those ways of living, unconditional love, unconditional forgiveness, unconditional life, that is the divine reality into which we are invited. Not at some future time and place, but here and now. Christ, our God, longs and desires to open our minds to understand the Scriptures, to understand all that has been written and spoken and revealed about Him in whatever form that happens and has happened. That's what Jesus did for His disciples, and it's what He does for us too now. And this is not some academic or intellectual understanding. That the disciples are witnesses does not mean that they now have all the answers. Really, they're just as confused as ever. But it does mean that they now have the life that Jesus wants to give them. They are witnesses based not on what they know, but on who they are on how they live and their relationship with the risen Christ. And we don't know exactly how this happens. We can't issue one another with a set of instructions or a to-do list. That would be like giving a set of instructions on precisely how to fall in love. The resurrected life is not achieved it is received. It happens when we risk unbinding ourselves from the usual ways of seeing and living and relating. But it's not a rejection of the natural order. Rather, allowing the natural order to open to and reveal something more to us. That's what happened for the disciples with Jesus' hands and feet, with his flesh and his bones, and with the broiled fish. They saw and recognized something in those very earthly, fleshy things, something about Jesus. And in so doing, they saw and they recognized something about themselves too. They understood their own holiness. 
And that happens for us too. Moments when we are aware of God's presence in our lives. Not some abstract, distant idea of God, but hands and feet and flesh and blood and broiled fish. The reality of God in the substance of our lives. In each of these moments, the one who is fully alive and risen, the Christ, is calling us to see and recognize him, to join him, and to discover our new life. This is the authentic self we long to become. The self that we already are, and the self we are becoming. This is a calling to live into resurrected life. And so let's not lose this moment. Let's not put this text behind us as something that we encounter during the Easter season and can forget about for the rest of the year. It's far too easy to come into this place each Sunday and hear the gospel and for better or worse, listen to words spoken in this place and then return to life as usual. We must not let that happen. Our lives are too important to let that happen. We must carry this text with us over the coming days and weeks, through this Easter season, through our lives. We must let it open our eyes and our hearts and our minds to the life that Christ is offering us. We must let it be the voice of Christ opening our minds to understand. And we must sit with it, pray with it, wrestle with it, trust it. And as soon as we catch a glimpse of the risen Christ and our own resurrection, we must treasure it and talk about it. Because we too are witnesses of these things. We too, like the disciples, are called by Jesus to tell the story, to live out the resurrection, to become the newness of God's life in the world. The resurrected life is ours. We are witnesses to the world. Amen. Let us together affirm the faith of the Church. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, 
who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Almighty God, your son Jesus Christ has promised that you will hear us when we ask in faith. Receive the prayers we offer. Let us pray. Living Christ Jesus, through your risen power, make us strong to confront injustice in places where your people of the world are hungry, homeless, seeking refuge from war, especially in the Holy Lands and Ukraine. We ask that you give abundance to all whose lives are destroyed by brutality and oppression and all who are victims of injustice and neglect. Give strength and comfort to those who mourn the loss of loved ones who have died through war, natural disasters, humanitarian missions and all who work for your love. Especially today we pray for families and the community and those who are sitting with those who are caring for the injured in yesterday's tragedy at Bondi. Teach us to share the riches you have provided us with so all your people who hunger for justice and peace may be fed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Risen Lord, in hope and trust we ask for unity and love between Christians. Give your risen power to clergy, teachers and all who in deed or word faithfully feed your good news and tend to your flock all over the world. Come to all whose love for you has been weak or faltering. Bless James, Charles and Bernie who are to be baptised today. May they grow in your love and may your light shine in them all their lives. We give you thanks for the vision, encouragement and mission of the Scalabrinian fathers at Lutwich. Equip us all for your service in the world that we may feed your people who hunger to hear your good news. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Risen Lord Jesus, you made your home with the despised and the outcast. We ask you, through your risen power, to walk alongside the people of this community for whom this Easter is one of misery and loneliness, those who are separated from loved ones, immigrants who are lonely in a strange environment, alcohol and drug addicts, homeless young people, unwanted old people and the inmates of our prisons. Walk alongside all whom we love our families, our friends, and ourselves. Walk alongside students and teachers as they embark on another term of education. Walk with residents and businesses in Curtin Avenue, Hampton Street, Cove Street, and Greenmount Hurstvale Road. Through your risen power, help us to build a community based on care and compassion that we may feed your people who hunger for a place of acceptance and worth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful and merciful Lord, bring healing and wholeness to all who are in need, victims of road accidents, their families and friends, all who grieve the loss of loved ones, for the friendless and the forgotten. Bring your healing on all who suffer from illness, confusion or fear, and for all who care for them. Especially we pray for Ange, Kim, Libby, Kate, Nick, Amelia, Diane, Jordan, Ken, Betty, Katie, Josephine, Jody, Val, Robert, Mary, Ian, Brett, Rosie and Judy. 
Look with love and compassion upon those who, for whom candles have been lit and those only known to ourselves. Show us how to share each other's pains that we may feed your people who hunger for comfort and sickness and look for consolation in their grief. Lord, in our mercy, our prayer. Dear Lord, you suffered death and rose again to bring you life to all your people. We give you thanks for your disciples of every generation, for all whose lives have borne witness to your risen power. Fit us, like them, to be your witnesses in the world and bring us with all the saints into the joy of your eternal presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for those who have died, both recently, among them Iris Mortimer, and the victims of the attack at Bondi Junction. Those whose year's mind falls at this time, Dorothy White, Corinne Jeha, John Shelton, and all those whom we love but see no longer. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Almighty God, you've promised to hear our prayers. Grant that, that what we have asked in faith, we may by your grace receive, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We stand for the peace. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you at home. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All glory and honor be yours always and everywhere. Mighty creator, ever living God, we give you thanks and praise for your son, our savior Jesus Christ, who by the power of your spirit was born of Mary and lived as one of us. He is the true Paschal Lamb who was offered for us and has taken away the sin of the world. And now we give you thanks that you raised him in triumph from the dead. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, has restored us to eternal life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. Merciful God, we thank you for these gifts of your creation, this bread and this wine, and we pray that by your word and Holy Spirit, we who eat and drink them may be partakers of Christ's body and blood. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, and when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and again giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore we do as our Saviour has commanded, proclaiming his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again, we celebrate with this bread and this cup, his one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Renew us by your Holy Spirit. Unite us in the body of your Son and bring us with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Saint Augustine of Canterbury, and all your people into the fellowship of your eternal kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity with the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of never-ending praise. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, in our own language or tradition, 
we are confident to pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. We do not presume to come to your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen.
let us pray. Eternal God, giver of life, in the breaking of the bread we witness the risen Lord. May we who celebrate this holy feast walk in his risen light and bring new life to all creation. Most loving God, you send us into the world you love. Give us grace to go thankfully and with courage in the power of your spirit. Amen. Please do make yourselves comfortable for our announcements. Thank you to those who are busy preparing morning tea for us. Do continue the fellowship over a cuppa and um, do, as ever, take your orders of service home with you and read, mark, learn, inwardly digest. As I encourage, take this gospel with you because it speaks to Jesus' presence in our midst, not in some abstract way, but in flesh and blood and calls on us to then go and be that presence in the world. Uh, the news section at the back of our orders of service is always a, a good starting point. Um, I draw your attention to our Anzac Day observations. Anzac Day falls on a Thursday this year, and um, all are welcome. I shall, in all likelihood, be at Cameron Rocks for dawn, but then again here at 10 a.m. Um, in church for our usual observations. So all are welcome to join at 10 o'clock here on Anzac Day. Um, well done. You, you're all here, and by virtue of that means you've navigated closed roads for the Tour de Brisbane, which um, probably has just about finished now. So the journey home should be a bit smoother than the journey here. But um, well done on navigating um, around all of that. Um, and some uh, excellent encouraging news is that um, we are on the verge of making um, an appointment to our children and families ministry here uh, at St. Augustine's. And so thank you for all your prayers and your support over the process. And we look forward to this exciting new season in our shared ministry together. The other exciting news is that the parish council have agreed and work is beginning soon on the air conditioning of the hall. So jumblers in particular take note. Um, this was your last summer of toiling through the um, warmth, um, uh, and it means that the hall will be a, a more friendly place for all sorts of gatherings in the future. So that work um, is due to commence shortly. And again, thank you to all those on Parish Council and beyond who have helped make that possible. The jumblers in particular have upped their game in terms of uh, the hard work and, and the, uh, the reward is a cool, refreshing breeze to get you through next summer. We stand to sing together.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. The God of all peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. With the risen life of Christ within you, go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.